This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, somebody's got chicken pox. Um, hopefully it wasn't Catalina. Well, yeah, I mean, she might give it to OBS. Uh, in DC, perhaps? Yeah, but just remember, anytime you have appliances, you have resistance. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 234 for Thursday, the 21st of November, 2019. This is the show where two... I almost had it, dude. almost had it. This is the show where two <laughs> lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. That's Kent. We have a live chat room. We appreciate all of you. And that's the show. Thank you. Good night. And that was great. That was that was awesome. That's a wrap. Um, it's right, it's just pre-show from now on, man. Just pre-show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, and hey, it's great. It's Thursday. It's my favorite day of the week. And um, yeah, it's Ritual Misery. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, How's it going, man? Uh, I mean, I'm getting ready to get on a flight to Arizona. So, you know, like I just got back from D.C. and got ready to go to Arizona. Totally separate reasons, but uh, four-day layover at home. Yeah. So, like, (laughs) any, any, any reason in particular? You just like, you know what? Um, Alaska's too fucking cold, so let's go to Arizona. <laughs> we got eight inches of snow here the day I, after I arrived back from D.C. Uh, then I'm going to fly out of here tonight and go to Flagstaff, Arizona, where they're going to have a foot of snow tonight. So <laughs> I don't know that that's necessarily the thing. Uh, <laughs> so, you're, so you're Elsa, basically, is what I'm understanding. Yeah. Yeah, just let me go. Yeah. <laughs> to Arizona. <laughs> Um, hey dude, uh, it looks like Evelyn's got chicken pox, which is going to be a very interesting study in our house because Autumn has never had chicken pox and she's too young for the chicken pox vaccine because oh you can't get that until you're like 10 or some shit. Yep. Um, I'll just like kind of make it happen. Like just, uh, yeah, well, well, Amber and the twins and David all had the vaccine, but have never had chicken pox. Ooh, okay. So we're going to test the viability of this fucking vaccine because we know Autumn's going to get it. Yeah. And of course, there's always a chance that someone in the house could get a recurrent version because, hell, it has been, it's been almost 40 years since I had it. So <laughs> there's no telling like who in the house is going to get it. This is, it's going to be interesting. So start your tallies now. Uh, place your bets because uh, we have nine people. One currently has it. One is almost guaranteed. And all of the other seven are up in the air. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say three. I'm going to say we're going to have a total of three cases in the house. Oh, wow. Okay. What do you say, man? What do you say? So, so there's only two. Well, there, actually, there's only one person at this very moment in the house that has not either had chicken pox or had the vaccine. Right. Mm. So you say three total, yep. including the one that has it now. Yes. Ooh. So Autumn's so, pretty so, much been, and then you're saying that one of the others, like, just it's going to get through. Right. It's either going to be me because it's been so long or it's going to be one of the others that had the vaccine that the vaccine didn't quite take hold right. Or I'm okay. saying one one of the inoculated, 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 yep. one of the yep. inoculated pre- persons will catch it and Autumn will catch it and Ellen already has. So that's what I'm going with. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll one up you. I'll say that I'll say four. Because if, if, one, if one's going to happen, I say why not two? No, that's, I mean, that's legit. So four, four is my guess. Okay. Uh, let, let us know your guess. Uh, tweet us at ritual misery, chicken pox, uh, uh bounty. Um, one, the, the total is currently at one, one out of nine. Well, I don't know if dogs can get chicken pox. I don't think they can, but Evelyn's already tried to give it to him like twice. <laughs> she's like, here, look at this Kai. And you know, of course he wants to fucking lick it because she's like giving. And then of course he's going to lick his nuts right afterwards. So I'm like, Evelyn, are you going to scratch his asshole when he's got chicken pox in his butt? She was like, ew, no. And I was like, well, then don't fucking play with him right now. But <laughs> He's not going to get chicken pox. Chicken pox on the asshole. That's uh, uh, No, that's that That would be a bad place for a... Uh, you, you had chicken pox when you were young, right? Yeah, I mean... What, I, what age? I was like 12, I think. So you were 12, 12 you're looking, looking like the third or uh, well, not like fourth or fifth grade, maybe sixth, depending on the age. You're, no, I was like, uh, I was like sixth or seventh grade. Sixth or seventh grade? 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like twelve or thirteen. But you're you're a late bloomer. Your birthday's in July. So like you were one of the youngest kids in class all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um I got it uh Christmas break of uh, first grade. Mm. So it's that's been not a bad time to get it, really. Uh I mean I didn't get to skip any school, which is kind of bullshit. Uh but <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everybody else was out playing for the entire two weeks, and I was sitting in the house watching uh, Babar and Fraggles. <laughs> Babar. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, we had free HBO at the time. I don't know how we had it, but we had it. So Fraggles and, and Babar. Um, not to, uh, let's just say that I slept through Babar. No. Never really been an elephant kind of person. Um, yep. But hey, uh, so yeah, that's gonna, that's happening. And I just got back from DC, which was a very interesting trip. Got to hang out with Richard for the entire week. He actually worked with me th- that week. So very cool, and uh, got to explore the George Washington University Law School campus. Um, didn't really do okay. anything else because we were just fucking working so much. But yeah, it was, it was a good time. Uh, and that's for um, you went there for a podcast reason, right? Yes, I uh, went there to record some episodes of Talking Feds. Yeah, so people should check that out in their podcatchers. Talking yeah, Feds. Uh, we just did a Talking Feds now last night, and I. We did a rush, rush production and ended up trimming where uh, one, one uh, where host the host Harry Lippman was asking a question, so the question was missing, but the answer was still there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what you get for trying to rush rush through the fucking edit in just a couple hours. So that's that's why you weren't on the show last week. Because yeah, because you were traveling. Um, so I tried to do something. I, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do a full up show. I'm just going to do a game stream. So I decided that I wanted to. To stream uh, Goat Simulator. I don't know if you've ever played Goat Simulator. I have, I've not, but I've seen it and, and heard oh, about it. It's hilarious. It's so much fun. Um, but I didn't get very far uh, <laughs> with my attempts at streaming, at least not at first. Uh, Mac OS underwent an update about, I guess it's been about a month or so now. Right. Called to, Catalina. Yeah. It's version 10.15 or something like yeah. that. I don't know. Um, yeah, Catalina. Uh, they made it so that uh, unless your apps are 64-bit or better, I guess, then it's um, it's just that. Uh, well, fuck you. Just uh, just deal with it, I guess. Yes. Um, and this, OBS. This has been an issue with Audio Hijack as well. Yeah, OBS is one of the programs that don't play well with Catalina. Yeah. Um, basically, it, it if you can get the app to open. It will not display any of your scenes properly. Like all of the elements that you put into your scenes will not, like the links will just be broken. That's awesome. Uh, that's that's one thing. And then also it will not recognize, it will not recognize video inputs or, or audio inputs. So mics and cameras will not work in OBS unless you open OBS through terminal. You have to open terminal and main, you have to, you have to type in commands. Is is it a, a pseudo thing? Um, it's well, so OBS has, uh, in their forums, uh, the developers actually put a post, um, in their forums about it. And it's basically, um, uh, oh gosh, what is, uh, this is the way that Catalina handles permissions mm. is basically what it is. And they have not fixed the app to, uh, basically issue the commands properly to the OS. <sighs> it's a thing. It's a difficult thing to fix. Uh, if, if, if only they'd had since like June to fix this. Uh, right. I know. <laughs> I know. I don't know what the hell happened, but uh, Steam has issues as well. Like a lot of things have issues with yeah. Catalina. It's, it's not, uh, I mean, I understand that, yes, people had time, yeah. But how much time do they have? I mean, these are not e- like, oh, oh, okay, cool. I'll fix this real quick. <laughs> these are like, yeah, especially on OBS, which is open source and developed by donations. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, that was a uh, that was an issue. I finally got OBS to work. I was able to stream. I streamed without sound for most of it. <laughs> um, I lost what audience I did have <laughs> by the time I was actually streaming. Um, you know, with sound and everything. And it was kind of a disaster. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that was that, man. So, um, welcome to Richard Misery. Yeah. So, 
couple of weeks ago, last time we were talking, you were telling us about some appliance issues that you had going on. Um, can you give us a reminder of, of what was going on there and uh, any updates you might have with that? So our oven is broken. We just had recently had a refrigerator that decided to leak internally, so we had to replace the refrigerator. And then, of course, we only replaced the refrigerator of match set. We got a new updated version of the same refrigerator. But right after that, the oven decided, I don't want to work anymore, so the oven stopped working. Little did I know, because I don't use it very often, the microwave has also been on the fritz. As in, it's a 1,000-watt microwave, but it's behaving more like a 500-watt microwave. Mm-hmm. Well, we went and ordered. I finally convinced the wife, let's just order a whole new set. Get the fancy stuff. Get the nice stuff. You know, the double oven. Mine as well. Yeah. yeah. The, you know, the, all, all the things, right? Um, they're supposed to be delivered. Well, they're supposed to be delivered tomorrow, but I won't be here. So I called on Monday and was like, hey, can we, is there any way we can get this moved up a day or back like until Wednesday so we can, I'll be back by then so, you know, I can hook it up and we can actually have a Thanksgiving. Well, they said, sure, we'll we'll probably be able to do that. Uh, Call again on Wednesday because that's when it's supposed to be delivered to the distribution center. Cool. I remembered very late Wednesday, I called up there and they're like, hey, uh, yeah, so uh, I can confirm that it was delivered to the the, the, uh, distribution center. I was like, awesome. So we can get it delivered tomorrow? He's like, no. Okay. Well, why not? He, <laughs> he said, because the distribution center for Lowe's in Alaska is in Oregon. What? <laughs> Does that make sense? And they have to ferry it up here because it's too big to ship, like to, yeah. to, to fly. What? And I was like, okay, well, that's no problem. Um, I understand we can't get some of the pieces that had to be ordered from LG, so they had to come from Japan or Korea or wherever. Um, I get it. That's fine. Uh, I just need the stove. Is there any way we can just get the stove? The rest of the shit we can wait for. I'll even come pick up the rest of it except for the microwave. Like, I'm not, you know. Um, no, the two items that were special ordered were the microwave and the range. Everything else is sitting in my local Lowe's waiting to be delivered. The dishwasher and the and the the fridge. Okay. Uh so yeah. So now they're gonna be delivered on December first, which puts us without a without an oven for Thanksgiving. No. Now, yeah. No. Yeah. Now now here here's the kicker though. Everyone in the house is like, fuck, how are we going to have not, not have an oven for Thanksgiving? What are we going to do? And me being the resourceful one, I'm like, fuck it. I can just fry some turkeys or fry a turkey or whatever. You know, that's, it's not a, that big of a deal. We don't have to have like the full blown Thanksgiving we typically do. And then my wife nicks that and she's like, what? No oven? No Thanksgiving? Woohoo! <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I'm not fighting that. <laughs> What? She's like, you mean I get a four-day weekend off and I don't have to don't have to sit there in the kitchen for three days preparing for shit? I was like, oh, that's that's valid. Okay. So we're just going to not do Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving this year. We'll probably just do a really big Christmas thing. Oh, my God. That would depress me. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. You just uh, d- delay it until Christmas. That way I can that's have... Like- that way I can have my favorite holiday at the same time that everybody else has their favorite holiday. Because I fucking like saying, hate Christmas. Yeah, I was going to say, that's like if you love Christmas, it's like saying that, you know what? I mean, y'all have birthdays throughout the year, <laughs> so let's just delay the presents until then. It's like, yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're just going to delay Thanksgiving until Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Which means yeah. for the streamathon, I'll be sitting there eating some freshly uh, carved turkey sandwiches because leftover are... turkey sandwiches are literally my favorite fucking food dude leftover turkey sandwiches are better than just the like fresh turkey, turkey sandwiches <laughs> yeah like I, I always love putting uh like turkey in bread with um um uh geez yet yeah. cranberry sauce Thank oh you. yeah okay yeah, cranberry sauce is my dressing for yeah. uh for my chicken sandwiches or turkey sandwiches, man, uh, I can't brain right now. Yeah, uh, turkey, turkey left leftover, uh, uh, leftover Thanksgiving turkey, plus a little bit of mayo on a sweet roll that has just been retoasted. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, and 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 if uh, if I'm not in the mood for a, a little bit of mayo, 
Which, which when I say mayo, I mean Miracle Whip because mayo is disgusting. <laughs> I mean, okay. Miracle Whip barely barely passes the the test. But um, the uh, if if there's no mayo or if I don't want any or whatever else, then uh, it's already a sweet roll. You just dab a little honey on there, and it's even just as good. Okay. Yeah, yeah I could go for that. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, speaking of the problems that I've been having, uh, you've got Star Wars Resistance on here. <laughs> that sounds like something that uh, I've, oh, I've heard some mixed reviews. Dude, yeah. So for those that don't know, Star Wars Resistance is the current animated series for Star Wars uh, airing on Disney XD. I get to watch it because we're kind of hijacking someone's uh, YouTube TV account. Um <laughs> I guess I got rid of YouTube TV several months ago because it's like it's way too expensive for what it's worth. Uh-huh. Um, but um, somebody's like, oh, pff, we've got however many concurrent logins and we only use the one here. <laughs> oh, OK. Um, so the, anyway, so um, I've, I caught up with Star Wars Resistance. They're on season two, which is actually the final season. Um, yeah. So the the first I would say all but the last two or three episodes of season one. It, it was a struggle to get through the show. It's very, it feels very aimed at kids. It's always a like villain of the week kind of thing. And there's an alien that reminds me of fucking Jar Jar Binks because he's so annoying. <laughs> and the main character Ezra is kind of a, a clumsy ass fool, uh, but always ends up like, you know, figuring shit out and saving the day. Um, but the end of season one uh, really picks up. It gets super, uh, super interesting, and super tied into the story because when this takes place is the show begins just before the force awakens, like probably a, a couple of months before the force awakens begins. Okay. And by the end of season one, you catch up to the force awakens. And then now we're in season two, which takes place probably, I don't know, a, a few months after the end of season one. Um, so basically, uh, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi have happened. So we're caught up in Resistance. And I believe that this show is going to cross over with um, uh, Rise of Skywalker. I think... I think the the episode that airs just before the new movie comes out, I yep. think it's going to be like kind of a lead in to the movie because in the trailer for Rise of Skywalker, you see this giant battle, right? Giant mm-hmm. space battle. It's got hundreds, if not thousands, of ships involved. Star Destroyers, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I'm talking about the on the Rebel side. On oh. the oh resistance. yeah 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 okay yeah. There's the um, you know it's just kind of a hodgepodge of all these just ships from everywhere it's all like basically in you know if you have a ship and you hate the empire or the 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 first order in, in this in this um uh, uh, iteration then um you know come on let's go fight them and that's you know uh observant people with a pause button <laughs> have been pointing out like different things that they see like like the ship uh ghost from rebels is very prominent mm-hmm they're pointing things out. And then one of them looks like the Colossus, which is the uh, space station slash ship slash refueling station, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that, that's kind of the focus of Resistance. And um, yeah, I think they're going to show up because the thing that was happening at the beginning of season two was they were looking for the Resistance base. And they end up actually going there Um just after the big battle at the beginning of Rise of Skywalker or um, uh, The Last Jedi. So like they just missed them, basically. So gotcha. I think it's all going to... Anyway, I caught up. <clears throat> it's super awesome, super interesting, and um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it now. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> How much pain was it to get to the point where you like it? <sighs> it was a grind. <laughs> I don't want to say I hated it. it. It was just not, just wasn't the best. If it wasn't Star Wars branded, hmm. I would have even, I would not have even gotten past episode one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but seems, yeah. Seems so so I'm, another reason that I'm looking for. Thanks, for, covered. Oh yeah. Thanks for the bits. 
another reason I'm looking for Rise of Skywalker to come out, other than my massive Star Wars fandom, mm-hmm. is that uh, we're actually going to get some money in the movie draft. <laughs> It'll be nice. <laughs> let's uh let's see what's going on right now while we're still not doing anything <laughs> welcome to your blue league movie draft minute presented by TV for the week of november 18th 2019 i'm your host big voice jay hey i just ordered a chicken and an egg from amazon fresh i'll let you know let's go to the <laughs> scoreboard Team RMPs in last place with $6.5 million. Team Everdrink falls to fifth place with $57.7 million. Team Gelf is in fourth place with $58.3 million. Team Snowshoe gets $9 million from Charlie's Angles and moves up to third place with $62.1 million. Team Geek Grills is in second place with $213.9 million. And in first place with $467.3 million, it's Team DKG. Let your stream team movie Jeff Minute for up to date listings follow stream team draft on twitter i don't know we're, man we're gonna make a shitload of money with rise of skywalker dude but uh dkg ooh, they're killing it right now and yeah. they've got a bunch of movies coming still yeah it's uh, uh, we're gonna come in second place again i think so man <sighs> it's gonna piss so. me off oh my gosh I'm tired of coming in second place <laughs> Right? Like, uh, I want to come first. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, if, uh, you, if you'd like to help us with our resources so we can uh, improve our likelihood of coming in first, which I don't know how that actually works, but whatever. Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery is where you can go to support this show and help us do things uh, better than what we're going to place in the movie draft. Uh, yeah, as I think it was B. Coford earlier in the chat said, um, why do you even do a show? Just do the pre-show and the post-show. Uh, forget the show in the middle. Um, uh, that's because we tend to have some of our best banter and best jokes during the pre-show and post-show. And if you're a patron over at patreon.com slash ritual misery, you'll get those. You'll get the pre-show and the post-show as well as a lot of, uh, things that nobody else gets. Uh, well, you, 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 you say a lot, but it's been tapering off a little bit lately, but we're about to ramp it back up. So we are. And, and you also have, you have access to the entire archive. Yeah. You give us, give us a buck once and you can dig in there and see what all is, is available. Yep. You can see Amos and I from like what, 20, almost 25 years ago mm-hmm. doing some dumb shit. Um, check it out like, on that, camera. <laughs> Yeah, on camera even. Uh, that's patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yep, and we're going to be switching to a once a month model starting 1 December, so it should ease things up a little bit. We're hoping people will be able to come in there and kick on a, a, a buck a month to three bucks a month or whatever the levels end up being, but we really appreciate you and we really hope that you uh, uh, continue to, to be pa- our patrons and support the show. Hell yeah. And if you don't already, please do. Richard, I'm talking to you. <laughs> um, it's about time for this, isn't it? Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. I got to figure out what to do about my lights if I'm going to be wearing my glasses on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you're, you're very reflective Yeah, today. Too bad our our show is not reflective. <laughs> it's it's reflective of of. So how's the game? <laughs> all right, here here in a little while we're gonna talk uh, all things Disney Plus. I want to talk about Disney Minus, which mm. is what I named this game. Uh, basically, it's just Disney trivia, just okay. straight up, no right. gimmick. It's just trivia about Disney movies. Here we go. Your first question in the Jungle Book. Who teaches Mowgli about the bare necessities of life? The bare necessities. No, I can hear the song. <laughs> I, I, I just, I, uh, I'm going to go with Baloo. Oh, shit. It was Baloo. Yes. Nice. All right. Uh, Cruella de Vil is the villain in which Disney movie? That'd be the 101 Dalmatians. 
uh, we were talking about that in the pre-show because I think we named this stream. What did we name this stream? 101 or uh, Disney screws, 101 pooches. Something like that. Yeah. All right. Amos, uh, what is the name of the boy who owns Buzz Lightyear in the movie Toy Story? Andy. I think you have a real good chance of beating your D. (laughs) (laughs) Which Disney princess has a raccoon as a sidekick? Oh, uh, the raccoon. Isn't that... um, mm -hmm. And Shit. no, we're not we're not looking for Elizabeth Warren. That is not the name of this movie. <laughs> Though she may have a raccoon, I I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's why. Um, yeah, well. yeah, uh, Pocahontas. I was thinking, like in my in my mind, I could see Pocahontas, but I was thinking the name Mulan. I was like, no, that's that's the other one that's got the I, she's got the dragon. Yeah, I did the same thing when I was actually when I was making this quiz. I was like, Mulan, no, not Mulan. What's her name? Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. All right, in the movie Frozen, which oh. song does Elsa sing as she builds the castle? Let it go. I'm not a big fan of Frozen. Do you like Frozen? I liked it. I can't watch it over and over again, but that's probably because I've already seen it over and over again. But I mean, yeah. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I, I didn't really care for it. I mean, it's not the worst thing on earth, but like it's, it, it's it did nothing for me. It's above the middle. Mm. I, mm. If I had to put it, I, I, I would probably I would put it below the middle. Like yeah, it's not, it's not great. You're clearly not the the target demographic, though. Obviously, obviously. <laughs> like, I mean, I could take or leave the songs, but but the I mean, uh, in, anyway. <laughs> All right, in the movie Finding Nemo, which country has Nemo been taken to? Australia. <sighs> Indeed, it was. I I didn't. No, that one. It's been so long since I saw Finding Nemo. I was like, mm. what? Like, what country? What? <laughs> I, I, I don't. Okay. What is the name of Bambi's rabbit friend? Mm, you almost got me. <laughs> um, Thumper. I almost said Flower, but Flower was yeah. a skunk. Flower is a skunk, yeah. Like, you can call me a flower if you, you want, want to. <laughs> <laughs> what is the crocodile swallow in Peter Pan? Captain Hook's arm? Mm. What does he swallow in Peter Pan? Clock. Oh, no, I wouldn't have gotten that one. I don't like Peter Pan. Oh, I like I like the, the only one I ever liked was the Rob Williams one. Oh, Hook. Yeah. 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 BK's got it. Tick, tick, tick. Yeah. That was the, um, so like it, you should have known that if you like hook, because that was a constant, um, thing. He was haunted by this. That doesn't this. mean I've seen it this century. <laughs> Fair point. Fair like point. literally. So Peter Pan, the, the, the old Disney cartoon actually has a very, very racist <laughs> scene in it, at least by today's standards. You, uh, you don't say, there's a there's a scene where they're they're uh, with some Native Americans and um, yes, it's very very racially stereotyped. <laughs> Angela Lansbury plays a witch called Miss Eglantine Price in which Disney movie? You don't even need to think about the name. What movie did Angela Lansbury play a witch? Well, uh, yeah, because she's played, uh, she's been in, in at least two movies that I know of. As a witch? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, she's she's, she, she's been in at least two movies. She was a tea kettle in one, Mrs. Potts. Okay, okay. Um, All right. uh, hint, hint. This is a live action film. So 
So it's actually the Angela Lansbury, not the voice of Angela Lansbury. Oh, oh shit! Did I have the the next the next couple no. of questions? These last two questions actually are live action films. No, I don't. I I, I don't know. You're probably answer, saying I'll I'll be pissed. But yeah. yeah. So well, so let me let me do this first. The answer I was looking for is bed knobs and broomsticks. Never seen it. Wow. Yeah, that was a staple in my house when I was little. Yeah. I, all these old, old Disney movies, like the one, like the like 1960s and like early 70s. Like I've seen like all Disney content, I think, from that time period, mm. like many, many times over. Um, bed knobs and broomsticks sounds like a really bad porno to me. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's not one I'd like to see, <laughs> especially if it starred Angela Lansbury. No, <laughs> no king shaming. Final question. Uh uh-huh. Character Bert was played by which actor in Mary Poppins? Womp 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 womp. Uh, your answer of womp 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 womp. <laughs> I was looking for Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. No. Nope. I'm I'm not good with the dick. Um but you did beat the D. I did beat the 7%. D. Um Dick Van Dyke, um an AI that was looking out for um for bad words and derogatory terms, uh might translate his name into penis van lesbian. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, you <laughs> at the end of the game with seven out of 10, correct? You beat the D and, and this is why we don't have, uh, 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 cultural shit that updates. It just stays the same. It stays old. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So Disney plus dude. Yeah. Um, Disney plus came out last week. Mm-hmm. Did you have uh, problems with signing on and shit? No, not, not even a little bit. I didn't. I, uh, Richard did. So- Richard had problems with galore. So I, I ordered or pre-ordered or signed up for, I guess, um, Disney Plus yep. months ago, yep. like two, three months ago. Yep. Um, I did that that three year sign up deal mm-hmm. where I get Disney Plus for like it's not even four bucks. It's like three dollars and seventy eight cents or some shit a month, uh, where it should be six ninety nine, but I got like a you know right. fucking crazy discount. Um, so. Here. So, uh, what, it came out on Tuesday, right? Yep. Was that the 12th? Uh, so, Monday night, um, like around midnight my time, uh, the Disney Plus app became available on all the places. And, of course, I downloaded it immediately and signed in. Um, no problems. Signed right in immediately. Um, it, like, no no issues with sign-in for me. Uh, what about you? No, uh, of course I signed in for my phone, uh, but yeah, no, no problems with me or back here at the house while I was gone. So, yeah, so so I da- I was downloading the iOS app and the Apple TV app simultaneously, and of course the iOS app fucking loaded instantly. Um, so while it was still downloading on Apple TV, I logged in on my phone, mm-hmm. and um, when I went to log in on Apple TV, once it finally loaded, it was uh, like, Hey, uh, let's hook that up for you. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, Oh, Oh, you logged in over there. So yeah. here you go. Um, I, I, I need to bring something up real quick. You said that there was a three year deal. Uh, if you signed on beforehand, I put, I took part of that as well. And now there's another deal with Verizon that if you're on one of their <laughs> unlimited plans, or if you add an, to upgrade to an unlimited plan, um, mm-hmm. you get a free year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Those can both work simultaneously. Oh, so wait. being that I already have Verizon Unlimited, I wait, now I have was... four years for prepaid for the price of what twenty months or whatever it was. Oh my god! Okay, that's that's wonderful to know. Yeah. Just, uh, so do I call Verizon or do I get a hold of Disney? You can go to the Verizon website and uh, just search for Disney Plus, and there's a link there, and then it'll take you to the Disney website. You'll you'll sign in, and then the next day you'll get an email from Disney Plus saying, "Hey, we saw that you prepaid and you just took part in the Verizon deal, so we're gonna pause your prepaid until the Verizon deal runs out after the year, and then we'll continue your prepaid." Oh, that's brilliant! It's amazing. So yeah, oh, four, four years. Mark. It's forty-eight months for the price of twenty. 
if you do both. Oh my god! I know it's I'm it's fucking it. stupid. It, it's, it comes out to like what, dude? Like a dollar a month the, or some shit. And the thing is, like, I think six ninety nine. I paid del. I would pay double that right. easily. Yeah. a month for Disney Plus. Right. Oh my god! So yeah, if you're a Verizon uh, Unlimited subscriber, uh, go hit that up and do that. That is fantastic. God, this are, is. Are you on the? Are, are you Verizon what? Unlimited now? I thought you had the. Uh, I've, no, I've been unlimited for yeah. two years now. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. So yeah, that just came out. Yeah. Go make do, man. Like, go hit that shit up. Get that free year, because fuck it. I thought I'd fucked myself on that deal because I'd already done the uh, the other thing. I did too, and then uh, David sent me a text saying, "No, I think you can do both." And I was like, "Fuck it, I'll go check it out." And sure as hell, it worked. And I was like, "Well, make sure I mention that to Kent." That is fantastic. So, uh, how much time have you spent in the Disney Plus environment? Uh, Richard and I watched Mandalorian the first night it was out. We also watched it on Friday when the second episode came out. Um, I have messed around with it a little bit with the family and perused through uh, the things. Richard was having a lot of problems with the app itself, with some of the menus. Like when you go across the top, it goes like uh, different categories. You know, you got TV, then you got uh, Disney movies, then you got like other movies or whatever, and like. And then at the very end, is like 4K. Like these are all the categories. On his, you'd have to go over, like hit over three times, and it'd go back to the first one. You go over four times, it goes back what, to the first one. What box is he using? He's for- on an Apple TV, uh, Apple TV 4K. Oh, what? That's what I. I, mean. I have not. I've I've used it on Apple TV uh, third, fourth gen, and Apple TV 4K, which is I guess four and a half mm-hmm. gen, whatever. And I uh, I have not had either any problems with either one. So. It could just be touch and go. Might need to re, uh, wait for an update to reinstall or whatever. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm eagerly looking for version two, um, or or one point two or whatever they end up calling it, um, yeah. because there are some things that are so the only bug or glitch I guess that I've got is once in a while I'll be watching something and then when I go to like if I hit menu to get out of that show mm-hmm. and then I like want to go look at something else or whatever like the apple crash it'll uh-huh. just like close out and i just have to open it again and it's like it's not a problem really it's a yeah. my annoyance because it only takes a couple of seconds for the app to come back up um he, but that, he was, that's the only bug he was also I, having issues with scrolling so when you scroll down the titles will, will repeat oh yeah see yeah. i don't i don't have that either that's weird that that's happening yeah. to him on apple tv 4k which is the exact device that i'm using yeah um i mean but, that's what we have things, up in our bedroom and it is working fine so it's I don't, I don't know it could just be you know user experience uh, your so mileage may vary so something that that's weird to me when i first downloaded the thing like like basically the moment it was available it only had i think three reviews in the app store when i when i snagged it hmm. it was brand new um, there was, so you know how when you're scrolling down, like in the, it's basically the same format as Netflix, right? Yeah. Where you've got like the, you know, recommended for you. And then you've got the, you know, Disney princesses category and like all these things. Right. Well, the very top one for me was continue watching. <laughs> so like if I started watching a thing and then I backed out of it, it would be there on that little thing all by okay. itself. So you continue watching, you yeah. know, and try something else and then it pops up too. Right. That lasted all of that moment because it has not been there since. Oh, weird. Yeah, and that's that's a feature that I really fucking want. That and if you start watching a TV show, like a series, right? Like like several episodes or uh, several seasons, whatever, you start watching this show, there's no indication where you left off. Oh, so like if you start watching the Simpsons, right? You're yeah. like, oh, you know what? I'm starting my, my Simpsons binge. You're on season one, episode three. You got three episodes in. You're like, you know what? Um, I need to, uh, go to the store and I'll come back and, and start over or, you know, or start, you know, pick up where I left off. Right. You open the app, you go to the Simpsons season one. What the fuck? Like mm. there's no indication of where you left off. You have to remember that you left off in, in episode three. Oh, that's bogus. Luckily, if you if you click on episode three, like and you were three and a half minutes in, it will pick up where you left off. It'll pick up three and a half minutes in. But okay. there's nothing, no visual indicator that, hey, dude, this is the episode you're on, and this is how far you got. Gotcha. Yeah, um, that's the big thing that I want. Um, sort of unrelated, but I want to mention it. Plex for the Apple TV 
just updated and now you can have shows in the shelf on Apple TV. You know, the little thing when you first come on and you got all your apps and the little bar at the top that says what you've been watching lately. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plex will now add it to that when you've watched a movie or a TV show. Um, so nice. what, what have you found other than The Mandalorian that uh, you really enjoyed? Because that's all that I've watched is The Mandalorian. All right. We'll talk about The Mandalorian uh, briefly. We'll, we'll try to be un – well, we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, so I've been – most of my time in, in Apple TV – or Apple TV, in Disney uh, Plus – honestly has probably been scrolling through things. Not like I do on Netflix where I, if I'm scrolling through Netflix, it's me like, fuck, I don't want to watch that. What, uh, what else? Come on. There's gotta be something I want to watch. And I just, it's been 20 minutes scrolling through. And then I decide just, nah, I'm not going to watch anything. <laughs> Disney plus I have spent probably a comparable amount of time scrolling through things, but it's not, Oh, there's nothing to watch. I don't want to watch it. It's I've a nostalgia like, trip. Yes, dude. Oh my God. So I was talking about like the sixties and seventies shows, right. That are in movies that I grew up on. Um, yeah, they're all there. Yeah. And I'm like bed knobs and broomsticks, for example, I just had like a rush of memories about like what the, what it's like watching that. And there's about like, it, bad porn? it mixes, <laughs> it mixes live action with animation. Like you, you think about, uh, you know, who framed Roger rabbit. You're like, Oh yeah, that's the first movie that did that bullshit. Rewind a couple of decades, bed knobs yeah. and broomsticks totally did an underwater scene where you had the live action actors interacting with cartoon fish. Um, anyway, classic, there's so many classics, classics on here to include all of the Kurt Russell as a teenager, Disney star, um, I don't know if you've seen these. I don't know if our audience remembers this or have, has ever heard of it. But me, I had the opposite kind of um, thing because I knew Kurt Russell from when I was a little kid watching him as a teenager on on Disney movies, um, like in super silly roles and really, really silly movies. And then I saw him in, um, oh God, what which movie was it? Uh, escape from escape from New York, I think. Oh yeah. Where I was like, Oh my God, that's <laughs> Kurt Russell. What the fuck? Where most people's experience is the other way around. If right. they even have the teenage Kurt Russell experience, they freak out at seeing him as a teenager doing silly Disney stuff. Like yeah. what the fuck? I've never uh, seen it. Yeah. So that's a mind trip. So search that out. Just go to Disney because you can search by actor as well. So just yeah. go to the, Go to Disney Plus and search Kurt Russell and uh, prepare to have your mind blown. <laughs> um, that's pretty great. Uh, another thing that I found, uh, Pixar. So, you know, obviously, basically the entire catalog of yep. Pixar is To on include the shorts, which I thought was great. They have a collection of just the shorts, the little mini movies at yes. the beginning of Pixar movies. And that is, that's amazing. The shorts. Yeah, the shorts are are some of my favorite Pixar material. Like one of my favorites by far is the old man that's playing chess with himself. Mm -hmm. But it's like two different characters. It's so good. Um, so they have a new thing that's called Pixar Spark Shorts. Have you seen this yet? I have not. So these are shorts, as it says, um, th that are made by like artists, right? So like if, if you're a Pixar artist. Uh, they they gave them an opportunity to direct their own short. It's like, you know what? Make what you want. Like, come up with a story idea. You're the director. You're the writer and director of this short. Go. And so there's like five or six, I think, out right now. And um, they, they're varying in quality, mm -hmm. right? And varying in, in my tastes. But there's one... That got me. <laughs> uh, everybody should go check it out. It's called Kit Bull. So like Pit Bull, right? Mm -hmm. Like a dog. Uh, but K, Kit Bull. So it's a it's a kitten and a pit bull that um, I don't want to give away what happens in this. But it, so but the, the basis of it is there's a there's a kitten that's just kind of curious doing and doing kitten stuff. And 
he or she encounters a pit bull mm-hmm. that that the kitten's initially afraid of, but then becomes curious about. And you go for an emotional ride. I probably experienced like five or six distinct emotions while watching this short and in very surprising ways, unexpected ways. And I felt them strongly. Nice. Like, uh, you know, you, you've seen up, right? Yeah. So, you know, the first five minutes of up Mm -hmm. is your heart ripped from your chest when you watch that. Yeah. It's, it's really sad. Yeah. So, it it's kind of that effect, but with several different emotions. You you're so, not expect- so it did its job. It's amazing. It is fantastic. <laughs> it is head and shoulders above any of the other Spark Shorts. Nice. Uh, you can probably if you don't have Disney Plus yourself, you can probably find it on YouTube in its entirety, mm-hmm. or at least somewhere on the web. I mean, it's only like five minutes long. But my God, man! If you want to feel what it is to be human. Like, like experience emotion, like kit bull. Check that shit out. Nice. Mike. Um, and the Mandalorian, what, what are your, what are your thoughts on the Mandalorian? Do you remember when solo came out? Yes. Solo Star Wars story. I really, 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 really enjoyed that movie mm-hmm. in part because the thing about Star Wars that, that has, captured my attention more than anything else since I was like, well, like when I was five, you know, it was all about Jedi. Right. Um, but like any, anywhere past that, especially like teenage years and beyond the thing that has fascinated me the most about star Wars is what's called in Canon, like the, the fringe element. Right. So like smugglers and bounty hunters and just the like underworld stuff, right. Right. The more C type stuff. And solo spoke to me because it was those things. Um, this show is more of that and it's wonderful. And I also love the aesthetic of, of Mandalorian armor. Boba Fett was always my favorite as a kid. Mm-hmm. I'm actually wearing a Boba Fett shirt right now. Cause I knew I was going to talk about the Mandalorian. Um, I, I love everything about it, man. It is, it's, it's great. It's a, it's a Western. It's basically a Western. I know I'm not the first person to say this, yeah, it's a fucking it's a straight up Western and I love Westerns also. This is Clint Eastwood. This is this is the man with no name. Literally, they call him the Mandalorian because he doesn't have a fucking name or at yeah. least it hasn't been revealed. Yeah, um, it it's great. It's a Western and it's set in Star Wars and it's the seediest parts of Star Wars and it's it's just fucking great. Um. I thought that it was slow. I thought that there were times when I didn't know based on how, how the picture was framed. I didn't know what I was supposed to be looking at on the screen. And there are times where I think they really go a little bit overboard with the, With the effects, essentially, especially with like the Jawas and things like that. Um, And all of that is to say that all of that is perfect for this show. It's amazing. It's very, very (laughs) slow, very deliberate pace. It's giving Ah, you... Deliberate. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Well, I mean, Richard and I didn't realize the damn show was over the first episode. We were like, wait, it's over already? Holy shit. Okay. We looked at the time. Yeah, oh my like, God. It's like 48 minutes. It's like 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the second one was only 30 minutes and it, it felt like five. Like it just flew yeah. by. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know if I'm hooked on it. Like I would really want to see where it goes. I didn't particularly like the big fight at the end of the second episode. I thought it was kind of a little bit corny. Um, but I did, I did, I don't know if that was execution or if I just wasn't in the mood for that type of viewing. But either way, just the basic storyline. I'm I I'm enjoying the characters. I love the character development. Uh, the pacing is is very on point, and I love the the effects that they're using. It's pretty pretty awesome. Right I, on, man. I have spoken. Damn it! You beat me to it. <laughs> 
So that is that is the uh, that's the big line. That's the that's the quotable thing from the show. From the first definitely not episodes, anything yeah. Mandalorian says because he's only said like eighteen words, I think, in the entire run. He, so he actually talks quite a bit compared to what I thought he would say, but it's n- it, he does not he does not elaborate much. It's very he doesn't waste words. <laughs> yeah, no, he's very conservative with his with his his yeah. vocal cords. So, do we talk about? Sh- shall we talk about the thing that? literally the entire internet is talking about no let them go there and find it and disney itself has actually said this is no longer a spoiler this is just pop culture now Uh, sure whatever all right so i tell you what if you if you're waiting to watch the mandalorian you have you have successfully to this point not been spoiled on the mandalorian and you're waiting to watch it and you don't want to know what happens this is the time to stop it but also, yeah. where the fuck have you been? Because this right. is literally everywhere on the internet. Um, let me let me, let me let me reveal it by saying, um, <clears throat> baby Yoda da 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 da, baby Yoda da 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 da, baby Yoda da 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 da, baby Yoda. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> what did you think when? So this was the very last thing in episode one. Yep. Uh, they're they're chasing this quarry. It's a fifty year old. Um, they get the I said but by they I mean the Mandalorian and the IG assassin droid. The assassin droid when they find it they say the assassin droid says, uh, "I was told to kill it basically." Yep. And the Mandalorian when he was given the bounty was like uh, definitely preferred alive. Like we'll give you some scraps I guess if you kill it and you can prove it's dead and sure, but, right. but please bring it back alive. Um, so the Mandalorian kills the IG droid, uh, to spare the child, <laughs> the 50 year old child. Um, in, in part probably because he wants the greater bounty, but also I think, I think he felt something for some this humanity. Some baby. empathy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so maybe Yoda revealed, I, do we know for sure, certain that it is Yoda or just the same um, type oh, of creature? It's not Yoda. Yoda's dead. So this takes place after Return of the Jedi, like probably like half a year or something like that after Return of the Jedi ends. Oh, we is know it? Yoda died. Yeah, we know Yoda died in Return of the Jedi. So this okay. is just yeah, and Yoda's species is, species has never been named ever. Right. So you know, like Chewbacca is a Wookie, yeah. right? But Yoda is a Whatever the fuck Yoda is. He's a Yoda. Yeah, exactly. So. He's, he's a Yoda from planet Yoda where they eat Yodas. Yeah. It doesn't, I mean, the only the only other Yoda that's been um, in the movies. In canon. Yaddle. Yeah. Yaddle from the Jedi Council in episode one, which I don't even think is named on screen, but it's a, you know, the canon name for that character. The female Yoda is Yaddle. Um, and now we have a third, right? So. Yeah. There's been speculation like, oh, could this be Yoda's baby? Um, maybe because they said it's 50 years old, right? Yeah. Yoda and Yaddle obviously knew each other in the Jedi Council. And um, it was probably only about 35 years ago in canon. Or no, wait a minute. Hold on. Um, th- see, that would be for episode. Yeah, probably like 35 years ago or something like that. When episode one happened in timeline, so they would have it would have been it, conceived and born just prior to episode one happening. Kinda, yeah. yeah. I mean so, that 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 maybe, checks. I don't want that to be the case, but it's plausible. <laughs> yeah, I think there's already going to be enough of that in uh, the Rise of Skywalker. So let's uh-huh. uh, let's leave that alone and hope yeah, that exactly. it's a completely different lineage. Yeah. It's interesting though that it's a it's a force user, obviously. Um, but uh, how about how cute the damn thing is? <laughs> that's that's really what everybody's talking about. Yeah, I thought that that Gizmo, the Mogwai from Gremlins, mm-hmm. was cute. And by God, he was cute. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. Fuck Gizmo. Like, uh, <laughs> like Baby Yoda is the cutest thing possibly have ever seen yeah i don't know i liked it 
Uh, I like the reveal. I thought it was pretty fun. Give me, give, uh, give me something to to think about until the next episode, and I can't wait for the next one to come out. Yeah, yeah and I'm I'm really glad that it's week week over week. I'm glad it wasn't a like an eight. I think it's gonna be eight episodes. I'm it, glad it was eight, eight is it, episodes. Is it eight or like six? I know I know it's not ten. It's less than yeah. I yeah. feel like eight. Maybe it's six, but I think it's eight. Yeah, I don't uh, know. Regardless, we get episode three tomorrow. Uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll be. Uh, Sitting in a hotel room in in Arizona. Um, hopefully, I get a good connection or good Wi Fi or something. <clears throat> All that being said, um, it's been a it's been a good week. We do not have a show next week because it's Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. though some of us won't, I, maybe I will stream since we won't be doing Thanksgiving proper. Huh? Yeah, um, may- maybe yeah. you can stream some some uh, goat simulator uh, or not. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be on the stream next week. That's no. uh, that's for sure. He's going to be too uh, full and drunk. Um, yeah, maybe not in that order. But uh, all right, Kent, uh, where uh, give, give us a tweet you've been enjoying and tell us where we can find you. All right, man. Um, I found this earlier today, actually. So this is a um, a, a tweeter, tweeter, Twitter, tweet, Twitter. I don't know. I don't know what you call people on Twitter. Anyway. Um, Shinbei Shrotri. I'm probably completely butchering his name, uh, but he is at Shinbei Shrotri. It's C H I N M A Y S H R O T R I. Anyhow, um, so he said, "Don't forget to pretend to have your shit together for strangers on the internet today." That was amusing to me. Um, that's kind of. Of course, that's that's internet culture, but it also that's that's in real life too. I mean, we we pretend so much. We've all got shit going on in our lives, but God damn it, if we're gonna comb our hair, we're gonna tuck our shirt in, we're gonna do our makeup. Some of us, um, <laughs> we're, we're gonna smile. We're yeah. hurting inside, but we're gonna fucking smile. And God damn it, ugh, I'm so here for whatever's happening. Also, this is exactly uh, why I hate fucking social media. Yeah, but um, he, he in his parody, he he kind of captures the like how I just kind of feel about presenting ourselves in in most cases. Don't get yeah. me wrong, I'm genuine around my friends most of the time. I'm genuine around my family most of the time, <laughs> but but to the general public, like you knocked on my door, I do not want you on my porch. But I'm gonna smile when I open the door, you know. Um, anyway. No, nope. um, that one spoke to me. What about you, man? Uh, so I've got two. Uh, the first one relates directly to the conversation we were just having. Uh, it is a description of the Mandalorian written to the theme of Lin Manuel Miranda's Alexander Hamilton. So uh-huh. I'm going to say it in not. I'm not going to sing it because that that would be stupid. Plus, it's not a it's part of the song that's sung. It's just spoken. But here you go. How does an orphan, foundling, son of his war-torn surroundings, dropped in the middle of a forgotten planet near Concordia by providence impoverished and squalor, grow up to be a bounty hunting horror? Yeah. And this thread was continued. Lin-Manuel Miranda chimed in on it a little bit. Um, it's it's pretty ridiculous. There's some people that tied it in really, really well. And I could see it becoming a full blown spoof by someone one day because holy shit, it just fits so well. It's probably already been done. It's got it's got over a thousand retweets, um, almost ten thousand likes. Like yep. somebody's done it. Somebody's done it. Yeah, and then here's here's the Lin Manuel Miranda. Uh, I synced it. <laughs> so, um, okay, and the other one, uh, I'm going to cut to the video on this because. Uh, it's uh, at Jordan Ull, U-H-L, uh, Jordan on Twitter, and says, God damn, I wish more members of Congress talked like this great stuff. And I'm going to go and we're going to watch about a minute video because I thought this was just fucking ridiculous. Because the okay. first question that I hear from so many members are, how are the returns? But the returns are great, aren't they? How are the returns? And I wasn't sent here to safeguard and protect profit. I was sent here to safeguard and protect people. And we're talking about reining in private equity, which is responsible for wiping out tens of thousands of jobs at Toys R Us alone. And then we're hearing, but what about the companies that made 100 jobs here? 
or 200 jobs there. Toys R Us, 30,000 jobs wiped out. ShopGo, 14,000 jobs. Brookstone, David's Bridal, Payless. Not to mention the impacts, the undemocratic impacts on media companies. Splinter, Deadspin, Sports Illustrated, local and regional newspapers. In the last 10 years, private equity is behind 597,000 lost jobs. And it's not just about the number of jobs. Isn't that right, Ms. De La Rosa? It's about the quality of jobs, right? When private equity took over Toys R Us, did you see folks' work schedules get cut back? Yes, definitely. Did you see people's benefits in, in some other ways cut back? Yes. I love truth to power, and AOC is leading that charge in Congress right now. I think she's amazing. I wish she was my representative, but I've got... You'd have to move to New York. Yeah, right. They have to, uh, uh, but that's not happening. But uh, I'm I'm just glad that there's someone out there being very open, honest, and direct, and not trying to skirt around all the issues um, in, in Congress. And it's amazing. And also, private equity buying out and destroying to- Toys R Us was bullshit. Yeah. So, that being said, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E, where I retweeted both those tweets, and you can uh, keep up to all the stuff that I find really cool on the ill interwebs right there on Twitter, Ethan Kane. And I am at RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. I'm Del Noche or Del Noche 77, pretty much everywhere else. Yeah, and uh, of course, you can find, uh, wait, 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 I, 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 I follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love it if you joined our conversation on Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Uh, you can find these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, for you, and for everyone else, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. <laughs> Too much time. Ah. <laughs> I don't I know why the closer didn't audio. sound. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, I got I got audio on the Ritual Misery stinger, but not the Diamond Club stinger. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to how to check it. Uh, so just I just thought about this when we threw our diamonds. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this on Boba Fett's armor. Yeah, there's a Diamond Club symbol. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Here, I'm gonna zoom in the camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I see it. Look at that. Fucking old school, homie. Yeah. So like uh, on the forehead, like just below or just above the the eyes, yeah. like on the helmet. Um, yeah, it's, it's full blown fucking Diamond Club. Uh, Covert's saying that he's, he heard it in the chat room. Uh, he heard it go live, so. Oh, good. Good, good, good. So That's weird that it didn't play. It didn't play uh, locally, which means you didn't hear it. Yeah. Which is odd. Hmm.